In its first few years, Splatoon has already become my favorite Nintendo franchise. Its characters are charming, its world is fascinating, and above all, its gameplay is fluid, fast-paced fun. Of course, with great games comes great music, and Splatoon's soundtrack is a prime example with its unique mix of energy, attitude, and aquatic antiquities. No matter the genre, the Splatoon series consistently puts out exceptional music. And for the 7th anniversary of the series, I decided to look back at the music from the very beginning. But I could easily stop and remember this music anytime I wanted. In order to fully appreciate this music, I'm going to review and rank every single song. To be clear, every song in the official soundtrack is fair game, except the beta version of Splatak. The Squid Sisters solos included with their amiibo will also be considered, since they're unique from other songs and can be heard in game. Live versions will not be considered since they cannot be heard in game, and they're really just embellishments of the original music anyways. As for the songs I am considering, I've divided the soundtrack into four major categories, battle music, octo valley music, extra music, and jingles. Each of these categories will have their own rankings in order to better judge the songs in their proper contexts, but after every category has been reviewed and ranked, there will be a complete ranking of the soundtrack to determine which is the best song in Splatoon? Octo Valley music comes from Splatoon's single player mode. Octarians have a distinct style to their music that's hard to miss. You'll travel through five sectors, detaching the Zapfish, destroying the great Octo weapons, and finally defeating DJ Octavio. While this category has some obvious highlights at the end, the destination is only made greater by the journey. Cap'n Cuttlefish's theme is a perfect representation of his character. At first, you're not sure what to think of him. The wooden drum tells you that he's got a bit kooky with his old age, but the guitar melody displays his love for adventure, and the snare drum harkens back to his days in the Great Turf War. As a war veteran, Cap'n Cuttlefish passes his knowledge on to you as he guides you through Octo Valley, and from the moment you meet him, he shows a genuine heart for you and treats you almost like his own grandchild. Cap'n Cuttlefish is a lovable, kooky, adventurous war veteran and his theme encapsulates this perfectly.
Octo Valley is a well-paced hub song with a melody that fits the location and a beat that fits the main character. At first, the song is relatively simple as you stop and take in your surroundings. They seem so different, yet so familiar. The simplicity of Sector 1 is somewhat boring to listen to separately. However, as you progress and get more confident in traversing the area, the beat starts kicking in. And, once you reach the final sector, it starts picking up speed. Sector 5 is cool in its own right, but it betrays some of the building up of other sectors and feels a bit out of place as a result. Regardless, Octo Valley is overall a simple yet catchy hub world song that builds on itself in a satisfying way. But enough about the hub world, you've got Zapfish to save! After you find the entrance to the first stage, you slip through the kettle, and the first thing you hear is one of Splatoon's most iconic motifs. Eight-legged advance moves at just the right pace, not charging you straight into battle, but not holding you back either. The guitar melody is kept simple as you ease into your new role as Agent 3, but the Octarian-style bassline keeps the song moving as you advance on enemy territory. The second half of the song shifts your focus from the task at hand back to the world around you. The more you travel around these levels, the more you see just how strange the Octoling world is. It's supposedly underground, yet there's floating platforms and blue skies? How is that possible? For someone becoming a new hero, the simplicity of the song works wonders. But even so, this song is not exciting. It's not boring, necessarily. In fact, it's quite pleasant to listen to on its own. But for a song that plays in the thick of the action, pleasant should not be the word that comes to mind. The second half of the song is at least more intriguing than the first, but it never taps into that energy Splatoon music so commonly produces. Eight-Legged Advance is a simplistic, beginner-friendly song which unfortunately leaves some things to be desired. Tentacular Circus is a hectic song with all sorts of elements. The bassline keeps the song grounded as all these different sounds pop in and out, almost like a carousel spinning around too fast to process. You're starting to move through these levels more quickly, but they're also starting to get trippier. It's likely your head is spinning like a carousel too. The song is memorable in a general sense, but since it doesn't have any sort of melody or even consistency, there's nothing about the song you could realistically hum or head bop to. 
That said, Tentacular Circus may be a weird song, but it's confident in its weirdness, which Splatoon music has always done best. Cephaloperate is the sound of legions of Octarians lining up ready for battle. With a deeper bass and a slower pace, the Octarians move towards you in a slow, intimidating march. As you go farther underground, the levels get more intricate and difficult to traverse. And, as implied by the more prominent vocals, the armies get bigger and stronger. You hear the trumpet sound, and you shudder a little, but you know you have to press on. Similar to 8-Legged Advance, the second half feels like it's messing with your head, and similar to Tentacular Circus, it feels sporadic with no consistent melody to hold on to. Cephaloperate is a cool song, but one that intends to show that the Octarians mean business. Ink Strike Shuffle plays during your encounters with Octo Strikers. The darkness of the stage and the more subdued vocals of the song are perfect for a stealthier mission. The bouncy chiptune beat sounds like a musical tiptoe, and the beats alternate between both sides of your headphones, imploring you to be aware of your surroundings in all directions. Ink Strike Shuffle complements the stealthy stages without being boring in the slightest. Octoling Rendezvous sees you charging straight into battle against the first creatures that might actually pose a threat. The Octolings. They're built like Inklings, they can swim and jump like Inklings, and they sure can shoot like Inklings. This song is designed to keep you on your toes, having a sort of zigzag to its melody as you weave through a wave of warriors. As the Octarian vocals multiply, so do the Octolings themselves. They try to jump you from all over the place, firing away and hoping to catch you slipping. 
but with your experience on the battlefield, you manage to outmaneuver them and splat them one by one. Octoling Rendezvous is an intense song for when you're intensely outnumbered. Octal Weaponry is another song that keeps you alert for an intense battle. The percussion is faint, but it's fast. The synth and chiptune start from the first phase, establishing a relatively simple pattern, but the second phase is where it gets good. The beats start pumping, the vocals start bumping, and the bosses start slumping. In the third phase, strings, trumpets, and even a choir join in as the Octal Weapon takes its last stand. While its first phase is rather underwhelming, its second and third phases make Octal Weaponry a heart pumping backtrack to every boss battle. Sunken scrolls can be found in every single level, and they help you piece together the backstory of the Splatoon world. At first, you look on thinking they'll just be interesting bits of lore, but as you read more and more, you realize just how dismal the events were that led to this point. From the extinction of humans to the Great Turf War, the backstory of Splatoon is riddled with brutal conflict. The song that plays as you read has an appropriately ominous tone with the low whistle of the wind, and harsh bells chiming continually. Now you realize why the Octarians took the great sapfish, and you start to wonder, who's really the bad guy here?
I Am Octavio starts with a simple electronic beat and adds to it as the fight goes on. You can tell DJ Octavio made this music himself. The battle starts simple, with Octavio launching giant fists at you that you have to dodge and shoot right back at him. As you move along, the space gets even tighter, the attacks get heavier, and the music gets scarier. There's more instruments, an Octarian rapper, and a choir jumping in with the onward motif. There's also another version of the song that plays while the giant missiles fly, and I'm not sure how to describe it, but it's certainly different. Octavio tries his hardest to overwhelm you with attacks, but you dodge them and fire right back all the same. Just as Octavio readies his final attack, something starts to happen to his music. Calamari Incantation, the one and only Heavenly Melody, starts blasting through the radio. This isn't just another Squid Sisters song, it is THE Squid Sisters song. It made them who they are today, and every part of their style is on extra high display. The intro parallels the rhythm of I Am Octavio, but with a less choppy progression. The main melody is insanely catchy. The beat is bumping, the rhythm is heart pumping, and the chorus will get you jumping! Calamari Incantation is an iconic heavenly melody that etches itself into the souls of cephalopods everywhere. Maritime Memory is a beautiful song to end the game with. 
It combines the melodies of City of Color and Calamari Incantation into a heartwarming medley. The Squid Sisters' electro-pop instrumentation is repurposed to create a sound akin to lo-fi music, and their beautiful vocals make the song sound like a lullaby. In the last section, Callie brightly continues the melody from before, as Marie supplements it with their own simple sound. The Squid Sisters are amazing artists, and Maritime Memory is a perfect example of why that is. Now, just as this song concludes the story mode, let's conclude this section by ranking the Octo Valley music. Considering this music comes from the story mode, you'd think that context would play a huge role in this part of the ranking, but almost all of these songs serve their purposes flawlessly so it still comes back down to quality. In 12th place is Sunken Scroll. It fits its context, which, given its context, makes it only situationally enjoyable. In 11th place is Octo Valley. For a hub world, it's great, but Sector 1 is just a slow song, and Sector 5 feels weirdly out of place from the others. In 10th place is Captain Cuttlefish's theme. It's a simple but catchy melody that suits him perfectly. In ninth place is Eight Legged Advance. It's a good song, but past the intro, the melody is fairly forgettable. In eighth place is I Am Octavio. It has decent substance, but for final boss music, it's a bit underwhelming. In seventh place is Tentacular Circus. Its hectic nature makes it hard to hum or dance to, but it's certainly memorable all the same. In sixth place is Ink Strike Shuffle. Grooving to its bouncy beat will make it hard to be stealthy for long. In fifth place is Cephaloparade. If the Octarians were more threatening, this song would be quite intimidating. In fourth place is Octo Weaponry. The first phase is pretty bare bones, but it makes a great skeleton for the second and third phases to bring this song into its full glory. In third place is Calamari Incantation. As much as this song has going for it, the one thing that sets it back is that it doesn't have much of a build-up or cool-down at any point. The whole song is consistently good and exciting, and it's certainly iconic, but I wouldn't comfortably call it the best. In second place is Maritime Memory. It's a beautiful conclusion with two beautiful voices. In first place is Octoling Rendezvous. Octarian AI is hot garbage, yet they get a battle theme like this? I couldn't explain it if I tried, but I can tell you this, Octoling Rendezvous is the best Octo Valley song. Now that our journey through Octo Valley is finally over and the Great Zafish is back in its proper place, we should relax for a bit and take some time to appreciate the little things in life.